You know, this is turning into the new hot coffee versus cold coffee. McDonald's or Burger King? Should you get a Mac or PC? Should you get an Apple or a Samsung phone? Should you get a crop sensor Sony camera or a full frame Sony camera? We gotta talk. What up y'all, tight shirt Terry back in the building and today I just left the gym. The, the hoodie is tight, it's, it's pretty tight. I don't even think I could get it off, but I hope you're having a good day so far. If this is your first time here, yo, a fat welcome to you. And if you're part of the fam, you part of the squad, you came back, make sure you drop a hashtag fam down in the comments. Now hold on, I gotta put a dope track on. Hold on one second. Oh yeah, that's it. Oh, that's from Epidemic Sound. If you want to try it for free for 30 days, there's a link in the description. The title name, artist is up there. We about to vibe out. But anyways, crop sensor Sony camera versus full frame Sony camera. Terry, what the what? is the difference and why does anybody care? I've been getting asked this question literally probably about four or five times a week for the last couple months. No exaggeration. If I were to pull up my Instagram DMs right now, which, hey, I might as well just put my Instagram down there too. Plug, make sure you add me on there and on Twitter. Those are down below. But if I were to pull up my Instagram DM box right now, you would see that I am not lying to you. So let's talk about it. I did not script this video, did not make bullet points. We are just about to have a conversation. Now, I've had both crop sensor Sony cameras and full frame Sony cameras, but before I get into the advantages and disadvantages, let's talk about what they are, right? So. Crop sensor Sony cameras, and I'm gonna try to make this as non-technical as possible. Crop sensor Sony cameras are little Sony cameras that do have interchangeable lens mounts that have a smaller sensor. Now, don't think that a smaller sensor is automatically bad because you might not realize it, but a lot of the films and movies that you watched over the years have been filmed using cinema cameras that have smaller crop sensor style sensors inside of them. So don't ever let anybody tell you that a crop sensor camera can't produce as good as an image as a full frame camera because they're lying. Because it is possible, you just have to know what you're doing. But anyway, so Sony offers these smaller, cheaper crop sensor cameras. And then they also offer the big dogs, the meat and potatoes, the full frame cameras, which is what I currently use now. And basically it's kind of what it sounds like. Full frame, you get a much bigger sensor inside. They're actually the same size as the old 35 millimeter film sensors. And that's what we use to equate everything to, which I will answer that in one second. So each one has its set of advantages and disadvantages. Let's talk about it. Now, before we move forward, if you like what you see so far, now's a great time to join the fam. Hit subscribe below, turn on notification bell so you get notified when new videos go up. And also, please drop a like for me. Y'all don't understand how important that thumbs up is. So now that you've done that, that's all squared away. Let me know what kind of camera you have. Do you have a crop sensor camera or do you have a full frame camera? Rep your camera down in the comments. Do it right now. Let me know what you got or what you're thinking about copying. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of crop sensor sensor cameras. Let's talk advantages first. Now, this has kind of been blurred a little bit. Well, I would say one of the advantages because one of the main advantages of crop sensor cameras was the size, but we now have the Sony a7C, which is a full frame camera. However, they can be in two totally, completely different price categories, which we'll, we're about to talk about that. So anyways, Sony crop sensor cameras are typically a lot smaller which a lot of people may prefer for people that want good image quality, that want to travel or don't want to carry around a huge camera, or maybe they're not doing it professionally. Maybe it's just a hobby and they want better quality than a typical point and shoot camera. Also, one of the biggest strengths, in my opinion, strengths, strengths, you know what I'm talking about, is the price of entry, which we're going to spend a little time on that real quick. So. A Sony crop sensor camera, current generation, we are not talking about previous generation cameras. We're talking about current gen, what you can buy right now that's of current generation. Okay, Sony 6100, in fact, I got one right here. Sony 6100 is the cheapest crop sensor Sony camera, current generation that you can buy. And as you see, it is a pretty small camera. You can get a crop sensor Sony camera that can give you professional looking results under a lot of different circumstances for little to no money compared to its bigger brothers, the full frame cameras. The cheapest full frame Sony camera, which we'll talk about in one second, is $1,800. Don't get me wrong, there are more expensive Sony crop sensor cameras. There's the 6100, the 6400, and the 6600, but the price of entry 
is pretty low for a camera that can produce such great results and that is a huge determining factor for a lot of people a lot of people don't want to sit there and blow two g's on the camera then turn around and have to spend money on lenses which you, let's just talk about that now okay next thing lenses this is a huge thing for crop sensor sony cameras you can get lenses on the crop sensor sony camera system for a lot cheaper in most cases than you can get full frame now the lenses on a crop sensor sony camera don't have to cover as big as a sensor so naturally you can make the lenses smaller smaller typically means cheaper in most cases but you get what i'm saying so the bigger sony cameras those lenses have to cover a much bigger sensor so not only with crop sensor cameras it's a cheaper price of admission the cameras are generally cheaper and last thing the crop factor now the crop factor can be good or bad depending on how you look at it right because the sony crop sensor cameras the reason that they're called crop is because they're a crop of a full frame with crop sensor cameras we need to equate them because full frame in general as a standard is what we want to equate everything to because we're only covering part of a full frame sensor we need to apply a crop factor so the sony crop factor is 1.5 so terry what does that mean okay i'll give you an example we have a 30 millimeter lens right here this is the sigma 30 millimeter if we were to put this on a full frame sony what we would get is a 30 millimeter field of view give or take a millimeter or two because there's manufacturing differences right However, if we were to put this same 30 millimeter lens, which it's a 30 millimeter, if we were to put that on a crop sensor Sony, we then need to multiply that 30 times the crop factor of 1.5 to get our effective focal length. Again, the actual focal length of the lens never changes. However, the effective focal length does change. So effectively, the 30 millimeter on a crop sensor camera becomes like a 42 or 43 millimeter because of that crop factor advantage i like shooting birds i like shooting wildlife the lens that i currently have maybe isn't long as i would like it to be well on a crop sensor sony because you have to multiply that crop factor to get the equivalent focal length that effectively means you can get longer reach out of the current lenses that you may already own or are thinking about buying that is an advantage for some people. However, because there is a crop factor, that means that those ultra wide lenses that you see, they're not gonna behave the same on a sensor that's cropped. So let's just say we wanna get a 16 millimeter field of view. I can just slap a 16 millimeter full frame lens on a full frame camera and get 16 millimeter. If I wanted to get a 16 millimeter on a crop sensor camera, I would need to get like an eight or nine millimeter because after we multiply our 1.5 crop factor, my math is probably off, you get what I'm saying? the lens will have to be wider to get a wider field of view where we wouldn't have that problem on full frame so the advantage is you get more reach the disadvantage it becomes more difficult to get wider shots because you need a wider lens and a lot of times they don't make super wide lenses for crop sensor sony cameras okay what does full frame give you and why does it cost so much what? money full frame cameras will generally give you better low light performance because let's just say we have a 24 megapixel full frame camera and a 24 megapixel crop sensor camera think about the size of those two sensors i keep showing you if we stuff 24 millimeter into a smaller sensor that means our photo sites need to be smaller whereas if we can put that on a full frame bigger sensor we're allowed to get bigger photo sites well terry what, what? does that mean that means that typically those bigger photo sites are able to absorb more light can typically give us more dynamic range so on so forth also when it comes to wide angles because we don't have to apply a crop factor then we can get an eight millimeter lens and that eight millimeter on a full frame is a freaking eight millimeter we don't have to apply any crop factor you can't get a lot of depth of field on a crop sensor camera yes you can and all of y'all saying that need to shut up okay there's two ways you can get depth of field. You can either use a longer focal length, get some separation between you, your subject, and your subject to the background. And with a longer focal length, such as like an 85 or 105, you can blow the background away. How else do you get it? You can go wide or mid telephoto with a fast aperture. Those are the two ways you can get it. You can still do that on a crop sensor camera. The only thing is you have to remember the aperture quote unquote disadvantage. So you have to calculate that too although it won't be exact because we're not using t lenses for cinema so like the aperture numbers are not super exact but you get what i'm saying so typically what everybody loves about full frame is that you can get some really shallow depth of field at focal lens that on crop sensor cameras with the same lens 
you would either need more space or you would need a lens with a faster aperture or that means the lower number like f1.4 f1.2 now another advantage of full frame cameras is typically they are bigger bodies which means more buttons and more customizability if that's a freaking word but more buttons more control typically the full frame cameras are built better just because they cost more a major disadvantage along with the cost of full frame cameras is the cost of the lenses the lenses on full frame cameras are typically way 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 bigger because they have to cover a bigger sensor and typically all of the specialty lenses are also in most cases okay i, I know we got some anamorphic options etc that are cropped but in most cases the bigger fancier special lenses are made for freaking full frame cameras they also cost a lot more they're also a lot freaking bigger now again those lines have been kind of blurred because of sony's new 24 40 and 50 millimeter that are designed for full frame cameras and their g lenses which i just did my initial review of those lenses up there it's not a good thing about sony's whole system is the lenses are interchangeable i can use a full frame lens on a crop sensor camera and i use a crop sensor lens on a full frame sensor camera with caveats but they work okay so that that begs the question right t you just told us all this good stuff about crop sensor Sony cameras. You just told us all this great stuff about full frame Sony cameras. You just told us all this bad stuff about crop sensor cameras and all this bad stuff about full frame cameras. Do I need to go full frame? And my answer to you is probably what? no. Because, okay, let's keep it real. Most people who buy cameras are buying them for leisure purposes, right? They wanna capture family, they might be vloggers, they might be they might be photographers, who knows? But the image quality gap between like an A6600 and an A7 III, it's not as big as you might think. A lot of people think that, yo, if I got a 6600 and I go to A7 III, I'm gonna get this stellar improvement in image quality. The reality is, is you're not. Most people can't tell the difference between a crop sensor image or video or a full frame image or video. And if a crop sensor camera is cheaper for you, smaller for you, you have smaller, cheaper lenses, but can still give you buttery smooth photos, video, you can still get great background blur, albeit not as much as a full frame camera under the same set of circumstances, then I think for most people, you don't need full frame cameras. Now, is there a reason to buy full frame or do you maybe just have the money and want to go full frame because you don't want to start with crop and go to full frame? Okay, I'm down with that. I agree with that. I use full frame cameras because I want the max that my price range can offer when it comes to cameras. So for me, I want full frame. I don't mind the disadvantages versus crop. But for most people, that will not be the freaking case, yo. Most of you will be fine with the 6100, a 6400, or a 6600 and some nice cheap glass like the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, the Sigma 30 millimeter. There's a ton of lenses for crop sensor Sony cameras and you don't gotta spend a whole lot of money compared to full frame. Cause if you go full frame, even if you want the cheapest lenses that Sony has to offer when it comes to zooms or primes, if you get an a7 III or a7C, you're gonna be out of freaking $2,200, dollars real easy. So for most of you, a crop sensor Sony is where it's at. You don't need full frame if you just wanna splurge. Nothing wrong with that. But anyways, I'm done ranting, I'm time checking. I'm at 20 minutes now before this is even cut down to edit it. Let me know what y'all think in the description. I would love to know your thoughts on the whole crop sensor versus full frame if I missed anything. Drop it below. And until uh, next time, that's all I got for you. So peace and chicken grease. Terry Warfield, I'm out. Peace.